السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, Today I'm gonna carry on with the anatomy of the calves and feet I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansour University So if we talk about the face, the anatomy of the face what are uh, the objectives of our presentation? Uh, first, I'm going to cover the muscles of the face, not all of them, but I'm going to focus on three muscles, the orbicularis oculi, the orbicularis oris, and the buccinus. Also, we will cover the nerve supply of the face, both sensory and motor, and then the blood supply, including the arterial supply and the venous drainage, and finally, the lymphatic drainage of the face. For uh, the orbicularis oculi, as you can see in these two diagrams, the orbicularis oculi uh, formed, is formed of many parts. The part that lies within the eyelid is called the palpebral part, originates from the medial palpebral ligament, this is the medial palpebral ligament at the medial angle of the eye, and uh, the wider part that uh, wraps or circles encircles the orbit is called the orbital part of the orbicularis oculi it originates from the bone uh, from uh, the nasal part of the frontal bone and also from the frontal process of the maxilla from this area for the insertion of the orbicularis oculi again we will divide it into the palpebral part the part that lies within the eyelid um, this part of the muscle will be inserted into the lateral palpebral ray. Uh, the word ray means that meeting of two muscles together. So the upper one and the lower one will meet at the lateral palpebral ray, at the lateral angle of the eye. While the orbital part uh, forms an interrupted ellipse that circles around the orbit like this. So it starts from the medial side here, goes around the orbit and inserts in the same uh, place here. For the nerve supply, of course, like any other muscle in the face, they are all supplied by the facial nerve. For the action, the palpebral part closes the eyelid gently, as if you are sleeping, while the orbital part will forcibly close the eyelid if you are afraid of something to get inside your eye and you are protecting it by closing it tightly like this for orbicularis oris um, this is the circular muscle here that surrounds the mouth it originates uh, as follows it has a superficial part like from the surrounding muscles of the face like from these muscles that surround the opening of the mouth while the deep part uh, they have bony attachment from the maxilla near the midline and also from the mandible near the midline regarding the insertion of the orbicularis oris it again forms like the orbicularis oculi and ellipse, but this time around the mouth, uh, opening like this. For the nerve supply of the orbicularis oris, again from the facial nerve, and for the action, it closes and protrudes the lips to the smallest circle possible, like this cute baby here. So it closes the mouth opening and protrude it like this. Uh, the vaccinator muscle, it takes origin uh, from the following. The part of the maxilla above the uh, three molars and from the mandible below the lower three molars and in between from something called trigo mandibular ray, like this one. 
and again rape means meeting of two muscles so this rape extends from the this part of the uh, skull here it's called the recoid process and extend downward to the mandible and gets attachment to both muscles here the one in the front will be the paxillator and the one in the back will be one of the muscles of the pharynx it's called superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx this one okay for the insertion um, the paxillator blends with the orbicularis oris into the legs so uh, this is the upper fibers pass through the upper lip and these are uh, the lower fibers but in the lower left while those in the middle will crisscross like this at the angle of the mouth nerve supply again from the facial nerve and its action will be as follows it stresses the cheeks against the teeth and also compresses the distended cheeks as if you are blowing into a balloon. Uh, for the nerve supply of the face, the sensory um, supply of the face through the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve from the ophthalmic, from the maxillary, and from the mandibular divisions of the uh, trigeminal nerve. Except for a small area over the angle of the mandible and the parotid gland. Uh, these areas are supplied by uh, one of the branches of the cervical plexus which is called great auricular nerve and as I mentioned the muscles of the face are supplied by branches from the facial nerve okay if you look at this diagram you can see the trigeminal nerve here or the trigeminal ganglia it has three divisions the ophthalmic mainly supplies the eye and then some of its branches come out of the orbit to supply part of the face here. This is the maxillary division which is uh, mainly concerned with supplying uh, of the maxilla and the teeth of the upper jaw. And this is the mandibular division which will supply uh, the teeth of the lower jaw and the area here. Uh, of the skin of the face over the uh, mandible. In this diagram, you can see the nerve supply of the face. In this half, you can see the five branches of the facial nerve, um, which supply the muscles of the face. And in this half, you can see the sensory nerve supply of the face from the three different divisions of the trigeminal nerve. This is the ophthalmic division. This is the maxillary division. And this is the mandibular uh, division and you can see this area over the angle of the mandible and uh, the parotid region will be supplied by a different nerve rather than the trigeminal. So uh, the ophthalmic nerve will give rise to five branches. The medial one is called supratrochlear nerve. We are already familiar with it from the scalp presentation. And lateral to it lies the supraorbital nerve, this one, and they both will supply the skin of the forehead. Uh, on the lateral side, we have the lacrimal nerve, which will supply the lateral part of the upper eyelid. And then we have the infratrochlear nerve, will supply parts of the eyelid uh, besides the bridge of the nose. And here we have the external nasal nerve, which will supply the tip of the nose. So from this diagram, this area uh, represents the territory of the ophthalmic nerve. Supplies the forehead, the upper eyelid, the bridge of the nose, and the tip of the nose. The other division uh, is the maxillary nerve, which gives us to three branches. At the anterior part of the temporal region, we have the zygomatic or temporal nerve. Um, below it lies the zygomatic or facial nerve, which supplies this area over the zygoma or over the cheekbone. And this 
large branch of the uh, maxillary nerve is called the infraorbital nerve. It looks like a spider. So it gives many branches to the lower eyelid, to the side of the nose, to the uh, upper lip, and also to the uh, cheekbone here. From the mandibular nerve, we have three divisions. Again, one in front of the auricle. It's called the auricular temporal nerve, so it will supply the posterior part of the temple. Here over the cheek, we have the buccal nerve. And over the chin, we have the mental nerve. Uh, and this small area, like I said, over the angle of the mandible and the parotid region, will uh, be supplied by the great auricular nerve. I know it will take some time to uh, remember all of these nerves, but if you understand the meaning of each nerve in English, you can figure out the area uh, it supplies. Uh, for the blood supply of the face, we have the arterial supply and the venous drainage. For uh, the arterial supply, I think you are already familiar with this uh, picture. This is the external carotid artery, which passes upwards till it reaches the level of the neck of the mandible. It divides into two terminal branches. The one that uh, lies over the side of the skull is called the superficial temporal artery, while the one that um, goes deep to the neck of the mandible is called the maxillary artery. Uh, the main artery that arises uh, from the external carotid and supplies the face would be the facial artery, as you see here. It passes obliquely in the face and ends at the medial angle of the eye as the angular artery. And, like I said, we have the superficial temporal artery. And uh, uh, we have small arteries that accompany the sensory nerves of the face. So again, we have the supratrochlear, supraorbital, external nasal, infratrochlear, lacrimal, infraorbital, uh, arteries, and so on. For the venous drainage of the face, we have corresponding veins to the arteries. So we have the superficial uh, temporal vein. We have the maxillary vein here. We have the facial vein here. So how they uh, communicate and connect. The facial uh, vein begins at the medial angle of the eye by the union of the supratrochlear and supraorbital veins. It passes here at the medial angle of the eye. And in this region, it can communicate with the veins inside the skull through the ophthalmic vein. Then it goes downward like this till uh, it um, passes through uh, the mandible here. Back to the superficial temporal vein, it unites with the maxillary vein behind or deep to the neck of the mandible, forming a new uh, vein called the retromandibular vein because it passes behind the mandible. So it's called the retromandibular vein. The retromandibular vein. At the level of the angle of the mandible will split into two divisions anterior division and posterior division the anterior division will join uh, the facial vein and together they will form a common facial vein which terminates into the internal jugular vein this big big vein here while its posterior division communicates or unites with the posterior auricular vein and together they will form the external jugular vein. Um, finally, about the lymphatic drainage, we have the following lymph nodes. Um, they make a circle below the mandible. So starting from the midline, we have the submental uh, lymph nodes just below the chin. They receive lymphatics from the lower lip, from the tip of the tongue, and from the chain area here. The lateral to it lies the submandibular lymph nodes. These groups of lymph nodes lie just below the mandible and they receive lymphatics from the anterior part of the face. While lymphatics go downward like this from the forehead downward, they are interrupted by small lymph nodes 
over the cheek called the buccal lymph node. From the lateral part of the face, we have um, the collection of lymph nodes over the parotid gland, we call it the parotid lymph nodes, and from the parotid lymph nodes, in fact, it go downward again to the submandibular lymph node. Eventually, all these lymph nodes will uh, give rise to lymphatics that uh, drain into the deep cervical lymph nodes here, inside the neck. Uh, this is the end of uh, my presentation about the scalp and face, and I hope you like it. Thank you.